Ahoy there shipmates, I'm Gail Porter and welcome to the first of two programmes on careers in the maritime industry. In today's programme we will be taking a glimpse at what the industry is about, the areas of work that maritime covers, as well as gleaning advice on how to get into the industry from those currently on their maritime career paths. We hope to give you some counsel about what to do if a life at sea sounds like your cup of tea, the training provided and how to get your foot in the door. The maritime industry has always been an integral part of the British economy, hence the East India Company, Lord Nelson, far-flung sunkist colonies and rule Britannia, Britannia rule the waves. Not many people know this, but 95% of the world's trade still travels by sea and the combined net earnings of maritime services and shipping in the UK alone is worth about £40 billion a year. Ports have, throughout history, been a place where commodities, that was both people and goods, arrived or left the country. The UK port industry, by virtue of a long coastline and legacy of maritime dominance, is the largest in Europe, handling almost 600 million tonnes of freight per year. The figures are that around about 90% of goods by value travel by sea, and 95% of goods by volume travel by sea. So all of the, the heavy stuff, the, if you like, the, all of the raw materials, they all go by sea. And it's only, you know, the minority of very high, you know, perishable goods um, and, and, you know, jewellery and stuff like that that goes by air. Virtually everything else goes by sea. In 1989, privatisation and the end of the National Dock Labour Scheme changed the face of the industry, allowing the docks to run independently, free from government support or subsidy. At the heart of the maritime sphere is the City of London, the world's leading maritime centre. From where about one-fifth of the world fleet is controlled and 4,500 maritime jobs are concentrated, including shipping, law, banking and insurance. Even the United Nations International Maritime Organisation is based in London. And that's just the landlubbers. Thriving ports such as the maritime hubs of Southampton, Belfast, Felixstowe and Plymouth act as vital gateways for UK trade and that's not even mentioning the great British naval fleet moving in and around our ports. Indeed the opportunities to see the world, see, see what I did there, are larger than the SS Leviathan and QE2 rolled together. The maritime industry cuts across many sectors including the Merchant and Royal Navies, and there are a multitude of diverse job roles within these sectors, ranging all the way from nautical sciences, engineering, navigation, finance, risk management and insurance, to actual hands-on sailing and seafaring itself. If it is indeed a life at sea you are hankering over, <laughs> a good course heading is the Merchant Navy, which offers cadet ships trading schemes. Now, most people only know about the Merchant Navy from Uncle Albert in Only Fools and Horses. But to give you a little more background than anecdotes about bearded men sinking ships, the Merchant Navy is an overall generic term for the civilian shipping industry, operating a wide variety of ships. Ranging from small tugs, coasters and ferries, through to the large ocean-going tankers, bulk carriers, container and cruise ships, including supply and support ships operated by the Royal Fleet Auxiliary for the Royal Navy. The two main ways in are as an engineer or a deck officer. So let's hear about what a career in the Merchant Navy is all about from both disciplines. The Merchant Navy is a term that's generally used to describe uh, those who are employed in the commercial ship shipping industry uh, under what is known as the Red Ensign uh, in the UK, in other, words, in other words, under the British flag. Um, so it is essentially the commercial sector and this can cover all such activities like, like cruise ships, uh, um, general cargo ships, container ships which of course are big business these days, tankers, um, dredgers, down to fishery protection ships. There is also an organisation called the Royal Fleet Auxiliary which is the uh, uh, support service for the Royal Navy which currently flies the Blue Ensign uh, but nevertheless the uh, officers and crew for those ships are essentially Merchant Navy officers under contract uh, to the Ministry of Defence but they have a, a, a sort of overlay of naval training as well. So there are, there are a variety of, of, of trades uh, within the merchant shipping sector that, that, that people can join. Typically a cadet will come in and do a three-year programme. They'll begin with a short induction phase to introduce them to life at sea. Um, then they'll go to sea, they'll get some initial experience, 
then they'll come back and enrol in an academic program then they'll go to sea get some more experience put into practice some of the things they've learned and then come back and during the three-year period they'll do depending on whether they're decor engineering they'll do somewhere between eight or nine months of, of, of actual sea time with with more in the nature of 16 months on the deck side um, and they'll end up with at the end of a, a three-year period with work experience some short course certificates either a foundation degree or an HND and a certificate of competency which is the, the license to, to operate. It's a, it's a tremendous amount to get through in a three year period uh, and they change dramatically. I mean they, 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 most of them come in as boys or, or girls uh, and they're young professional men and women by the time they finish. Training is involved uh, some time at college and some time at sea to familiarise yourself with the ships you're going to work on and the equipment you work with. So you get to, get to physically use your hands on compressors and main engines and generators just to make yourself familiar so that you can take your ticket and uh, hopefully pass. The way that it worked was I went to college and I did um, some time at sea, some time at college and we do some exams and once you qualify you are an officer of watch and you can go into the Merchant Navy as a fourth officer or a third officer depending on what company you go to. To train as a Merchant Navy engineering officer it's a three year course split into five phases. Three of these phases are academic phases and the other two in between these three phases are phases at sea. So you get on the job training at sea as well as doing the academic training that builds the foundation knowledge that you need to uh, do this job. Now whether it be with the Royal Navy or the general shipping industry, as part of your career training, you are more than likely going to find yourself at an academy or a training centre dedicated to keeping the UK maritime industry as a world leader in developing, educating and training its seafarers. Indeed, there are a number of governing bodies who ensure that maritime is regulated and operated safely. The principal ones are Trinity House, the Royal Yachting Association and the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. So just what can we expect from a career in the maritime industry? I'm trained to be a fourth engineer which is uh, the most junior officer on, on the ship. We are responsible for looking after certain items of equipment and taking charge of a watch during the progress of the day. So we'll be responsible for ensuring the lights are still on, everybody's got fresh water, we're still going forwards, uh, and to take charge if any emergencies occur. So we're in charge of fire teams and things like that. To get here, well, I've always known about the job because I had a family in the family doing it beforehand and it's just what I want to do you know I enjoy working with my hands I hate sitting behind a desk and uh, I get paid to do it so hey <laughs> can't be too bad. My role as deck officer is um, primarily navigation I plan the passenger passages from A to B I have to plan them safely um, basically that involves drawing lines on charts making sure that I'm not going over any land any shoals and I'm not going to hit any landmarks, anything like that. Um, and also we have to look after the safety equipment on board, like the firefighting equipment, the life-saving appliances. So I'll maintain the fire extinguishers, fire hoses, um, the life jackets, all the safety equipment that's on board. We also, with Trinity House, maintain the light buoys and light vessels and we do some surveying and we as deck officers, even the junior ones, get involved with that too. The main things people do when they come on board and, and uh, come on a course with us, obviously they get to know the boat, um, we teach them uh, the main safety aspects to the boat, so making sure they're safe, so uh, fitting life jackets and you know going through procedures if something should happen on board. Um, from there we teach them you know, the basics of how to you know, get around a boat, how to sail, get the sails up, get moving. And from there we kind of, you know, get them doing everything really, that's what it's all about, making sure they do everything from cooking and cleaning to sailing the boat and making all the decisions. So, um, yeah, making sure they have uh, as fun a time as possible. 